this lecture is to help familiarize you with different types of genres uh, in young adult lit that you can hopefully use to recommend uh, books for students. So, and I would recommend teaching the students these genres as well in your classroom to help them gain a wide variety of different types of books that they may like. Uh, genre uh, comes from a French word meaning type or kind. So again, it's a type of uh, book. Uh, and it's used to classify books with common characteristics. And some books don't always fit into one genre. Sometimes they can be in several. But again, a genre is just a type of book. One genre um, that often gets forgotten is poetry. Um, and poetry is a shortened form of writing, uses figurative language like metaphor, similes, personification, and involves the author's expression of feelings and opinions. Some poetry is like free verse po poetry where it doesn't always have any rules or form, and then there's some structured poetry like haikus or limericks, um, or ones that have a certain rhyme scheme. Um, so there's all kinds of different poetry that students may like. Here are some examples of poetry that students may like. I would sec uh, suggest Shel Silverstein. He's a great poetry writer. He writes all kinds of silly poems that um, stu younger students usually enjoy. Traditional literature um, are just stories that are passed down um, by oral storytelling. So you have your myths, legends, folk tales, fairy tales, nursery rhymes, and tall tales, that type of writing. Um, and it's a foundation for fantasy. So some types of traditional literature that I would suggest are um, books of Greek myths. Um, there's all kinds of collections of fairy tales, Aesop's fables, um, and you can find all kinds of collections of these usually in libraries. And a lot of these stories students have heard or they'll see that there's different forms of them as well. Fantasy involves um, talking animals, mythical creature, magic, things that uh, would not be realistic. Um, the setting is often medieval times with like kings or queens and knights. Um, can also involve uh, magic or potions, witches, things like that. And oftentimes you'll see that fantasy involves a hero's journey or quest. There's this hero that is meant to solve some problem and go on off on a journey to um, figure it out. There's oftentimes a lot of good versus evil in fantasy. Some recommendations that I would suggest, the Harry Potter series is a good example of fantasy, uh, or the Aragon series, and also the Lightning Thief series, which um, involves characters you would see in traditional literature. It involves Greek gods and goddesses, but in modern times. Um, so even though they've taken those traditional literature characters, it's set in the present in uh, a fantasy uh, genre. Science fiction is another popular genre. Um, oftentimes in science fiction you'll have characters who uh, may be mutants from some scientific experiment or robots, aliens, maybe a mad scientist or clones. In science fiction, um, the difference between fantasy and science fiction is that science fiction we don't know if it could happen. Science uh, has evolved and all kinds of um, new inventions and things come about. And so with science fiction, the difference is we don't know if it could happen. So a lot of times your setting will involve the future, um, where there's advanced technology or it'll be set in space, um, or it could be time traveling to the future or to the past. Um, a lot of science fiction involve alien attack visits or new types of technology, experiments gone wrong. Um, usually, again, it involves that scientific aspect. Some suggestions of science fiction um, that I would suggest 
would be the Hunger Games series, which is very popular right now. Uh, the House of the Scorpion is also another uh, science fiction about clones. And Ender's Game involves kind of a battle in space. Um, again, these are good uh, suggestions for kids who enjoy science fiction. Realistic fiction involves modern times and again realistic means that it could you could see this actually happen but fiction it didn't actually happen so you have everyday people doing everyday things uh, could be a main character a middle school student involving bullying at school um, so again it's modern times and it's with realistic events some examples of realistic fiction would be Monster. Walter Dean Myers is a great young adult um, author, um, and this involves a boy who gets arrested for helping out in a um, robbery. Stargirl it, by Jerry Spinelli, he's another great author of young adult lit, about a girl who's kind of a weird outcast in school. And then Romeo and Julio is a modern day Romeo and Juliet love story. Historical fiction involves, is almost like realistic fiction, but historical fiction means that it's set in the past. So you may have actual real events like a uh, character involved in World War II, or um, could be someone who is experiencing uh, the pilgrims coming over to America. So those are real events that actually happen, but the characters are usually uh, made up or the events. There's some thi something about the story that did not actually happen, but it may involve historical people or historical events. So again, it is fiction. Um, the setting is usually pre-1970, so not modern times. Um, and then it's usually authentic historical events or significant people from that. Some examples of historical fiction would be um, Walter Dean Myers, again, another, uh, he's, he wrote Monster as well. He's a very famous young adult lit author, and he wrote Fallen Angels, which I believe is a soldier in Vietnam. Um, again, the character was made up, but obviously the Vietnam War is a real historical event. Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry is a family that uh, characters are made up, but it's set during the 1930s when Jim Crow laws were still around. And then John U. Tremaine is um, a very famous young adult lit book about a boy during the Revolutionary War period. Mystery would involve um, a detective, investigator, spies. There's some kind of unknown the uh, mysterious problem that has to be solved. Um, so usually uh, it could involve um, a crime scene or a detective agency or um, like a scary house where there's a kind of a mysterious problem that eventually is usually solved at the end. Um, so again, there's a mysterious event, there's clues, and then eventually there's a solution, usually at the end of mysteries. The, the mystery is solved. Um, some examples of mysteries would be Chasing Vermeer. Um, it's a, this is a great book if you have students who enjoy math or puzzles. Um, the name of the game was Murder. That's a murder mystery. And another murder mystery is Agatha Christie's And Then There Were None. Next, we go into nonfiction genres, which involve biography, autobiography, and memoir. And nonfiction, of course, means it is um, not fake, it's real, so things that actually happened. Um, biography is when someone writes about someone else's life. Uh, autobiography would be if someone wrote about their own life. And a memoir is sort of like an autobiography, but instead of a person's entire life, like an autobiography, a memoir is just a um, one event in the life or just a short account of maybe one big experience in the, in the author's life. So biographies usually are involving um, famous historical people, popular culture, so you have, you know, biographies on presidents, on sports heroes, on um, 
people in kind of popular culture. And there's all kinds of biographies out there, including uh, celebrities that students may be very interested in. And oftentimes these biographies are, um, even though they don't look very educational, they are very interesting to kind of see the viewpoints of different people's lives. Some examples of autobiographies and memoirs would be Soul Surfer, the famous surfer who was attacked by a shark and then continued on with one arm, Anne Frank, The Diary of a Young Girl, and the Chicken Soup uh, series. There's several of these types of series that um, are different memoirs that people have written in and collections of those. Another form of nonfiction would be informational texts. And these are texts that um, can be on a wide range of topics. And a lot of times students um, forget about these books. And informational texts are great ways specifically to find uh, certain interests with students. So if you have a student who's interested in basketball or in BMX biking or they're interested in learning how to draw. There's all kinds of books usually in libraries that um, students kind of forget about that are really uh, easy short reads that students find enjoyable. Um, so again there's all kinds of topics you can find for informational and it informs you on things that you want to know. Here's some examples of informational text. There's a book on bas on baseball, how to draw, cars, soccer, um, a travel book. These would all be different types of informational text on certain topics. So again, I would definitely suggest teaching your students these genres and um, Getting, finding different types of these genres on your own that you have read so that you have a wide range of books to suggest to your students where you can find, think you can learn about all the interests that your students have and then you have a wide range of books that might fit those specific interests. So, and I would recommend teaching the students these genres as well in your classroom to help them gain a wide variety of different types of books that they may like. Uh, genre uh, comes from a French word meaning type or kind. So again, it's a type of uh, book. Uh, and it's used to classify books with common characteristics. And some books don't always fit into one genre. Sometimes they can be in several. But again, a genre is just a type of book. One genre um, that often gets forgotten is poetry. Um, and poetry is a shortened form of writing. It uses figurative language like metaphors, similes, personification, and involves the author's expression of feelings and opinions. Some poetry is like free verse po poetry where it doesn't always have any rules or form and then there's some structured poetry like haikus or limericks um, or ones that have a certain rhyme scheme. Um, so there's all kinds of different poetry that students may like. Here are some examples of poetry that students may like. I would sec uh, suggest Shel Silverstein. He's a great poetry writer. He writes all kinds of silly poems that um, stu younger students usually enjoy. Traditional literature um, are just stories that are passed down um, by oral storytelling. So you have your myths, legends, folk tales, fairy tales, nursery rhymes, and tall tales, that type of writing. Um, and it's a foundation for fantasy. So some types of traditional literature that I would suggest are um, books of Greek myths, um, there's all kinds of collections of fairy tales, Aesop's fables, um, and you can find all kinds of collections of these usually in libraries. And a lot of these stories students have heard or they'll see that there's different forms of them as well. Fantasy involves um, talking animals, mythical creature, magic, things that uh, would not be realistic. Um, the setting is often medieval times with like kings or queens and knights. 
um, can also involve uh, magic or potions.